glasses on and the glasses off. Oh my. Well, I would say Happy New Year, but it's sort of well past that sort of time now. I think we're coming up to the end of February, and that uh, that wasn't a ghost, right? That's just dust flying around in front of this light. So if you've seen my question and answer video, that's just dust. So anyway, Happy New Year. I hope you had a great Christmas and everything like that. Um, I normally film this with a microphone uh, at the moment. I've got a new phone, and I'm trying to film it directly from the phone on the speaker of the phone. Don't know how it's going to work out, but as you know, this video, how we start them, we do a bit of history and then we're going to the ghost stuff on it. So this one is quite a good one actually, and it's got quite a bit of history about Guy Fawkes and all that in there. And uh, does the ghost of Guy Fawkes haunt this place? So we'll crack in. So just outside of Farrock in Barking, in the middle of a Hazen estate, you have Eastbury Manor. And literally as you drive into Hazen estate, the last thing you expect to see is this great big building there. So Eastbury Manor is a grade one listed manor house built between 1566 and 1573. Eastbury Manor certainly stands out in today's landscape. It's ridiculous. You wouldn't expect it at all. Clement Siley built the house for his family on land that was once owned by Barking Abbey. When Barking Abbey became dissolved in 1539 under the Henry VIII, which he got rid of everything, didn't he? I guess one of the most thought provoking parts of Eastbury Manor are the priest holes and secret passages when practicing Catholics would hide and the priests would hide when the soldiers would come around looking for them. You can only imagine the fear that they'd gone through during this time. But the land was put for sale in 1557 and was stamped up by Clement. Over the next hundred years, the land and the house would change ownership many times. Uh, I've done my best to try and sort out the owners. It seems there's still some confusion over some of the names and their owners' gaps. So in 1557, you had Clement Sicily. He had three wives, although only two at Eastbury. These were Anne Argyll and Madley Chamberley. Uh, Clements died in 1578. He had 11 children, but only three lived to maturity. Uh, you know, it was very general back then. You'd have a lot of kids, but a lot of them would actually die. Known occupiers from 1578 was Anne and son Thomas at Sicily. The way you pronounce Sicily, although it's spelled S-Y-S-L-E-Y, -E I'm sure that it's spelled it is pronounced S-I-S-L-E-Y, Sicily. In 1592, Thomas hands over a 500 year lease to his stepbrother. In 1592, Augustus Stewart hands over to Martin Stewart. 1628, sold to Jacob Price, passed to George Price. 1646, passed to Martin Knightley, who died in 1650. In 1653, conveyed to Sir Thomas Vaughan, Lord Mayor of London. In 1714, sold to William Brown and then given to his nephew William Cedric. 1773, joint owners Waisley and Thomas and Henry Sturry. 1792, had fallen into a degraded farmhouse. In, in 1792, it was taken over by Mr. Bushfield and Mr. Scott, their local farmers. It was when Mr. Scott was living in the house in 1792 that the damage to the building happened. The house and land continued to lie in the hands of the Sterry family until 1916, leasing it out to other families. In 1814, the Northwest Tower is said to have been struck by lightning and the whole tower had been pulled down. Um, it is in fact that you know, during this sort of time, the house was undergoing you know, quite a lot of damage was happening to it all the time. Sterry, that he decided he might even pull the house down. Lucky he didn't do that, but instead set about changing the whole interior of the first floor making it look like a coach house. One of the fun comments is locals said it was done in a cockneyfied manner. Other parts of the building were no better. Wesley died 1842 as a lunatic. One of the things we're going to talk about is the ghosts of Guy Fawkes. Now this comes from the, the myth or the legend of the links with Eastbury Manor with what happened at Parliament and those involved in it. So there's a bit of confusion, there's two sort of stories that link up this. So we can go from quickly. So we've got John Moore was an alderman of London. He was a tenant of Eastbury Manor in 1603. Moore was married to a Spanish woman, Maria Perez de Ricard. She was a known Catholic. His stepdaughter was married to Louis Treesman, the younger brother of the plot of Francis Treesman. Over the centuries following the gunplay plot, local legends sprung up that the plot itself was contrived at Eastbury Manor. 
we can't deny that Therese Manorsi spoke to his brother regarding this sort of stuff. So he could have spoke about the plot, and that is how people were tipped off. But they also can link in with the other side of it, that Lord Montague was staying at Eastbury Manor when he received the letter from the plotters. What we do know is that Lord Montague was sent a letter by his brother-in-law, possibly Francis Treesman, or Treeson, telling him not to attend Parliament on that day. Lord Montague sent a letter to the King and Lord Montague had the letter read out loud, presumably to give his brother-in-law a chance to get away. Now the letter read, My Lord, out of love I bear for some of your friends, I have the care for your preservation. Therefore I advise you, as you tend to your life, to devise some excuse to shift your attendance at Parliament, for the God and man half concur to punish the wickedness of this time, and think not slight of this advisement, but retire yourself into your county, where you may expect the event in safety, for there will be no appearance of any stir. Yet I say, they shall receive a terrible blow, the Parliament. They shall not see who hurt them. This consul is not to be condemned, because it may do you good, and can do you no harm, for the danger is past as soon as you have burnt this letter, and I hope God will give you the grace to make good of use of it, for whose holy protection I commend you. And this is where a lot of reports of ghosts of Guy Fawkes come into, of uh, Eastbury Manor. So people believe that Guy Fawkes actually comes to the manor to haunt it, to seek revenge on the people that gave him away. The, the building itself is absolutely stunning and it's filled with a lot of old artifacts and paintings on the walls. And you know, it's a really interesting building to walk around. But, but when it comes to the paranormal side of it, but we know a lot of other paranormal teams have actually investigated this place. And I did look at some of the reports before we went there. And again, my team know nothing about where I used to take them, so they wasn't given a heads up. And when I was reading the reports, there's a lot of uh, things like pulp glass activity down in the cellar, where people come out with scratches on their hands and scratches on their back. And I've mentioned this before in a video, when I went down there, I actually noticed that there was cable ties on the pipe lagging down in the cellar. And I'm down in that cellar at three o'clock in the morning. And I've got to say that it is eerie, it's a bit creepy, but I didn't didn't feel anything that wasn't sort of just my mind putting it there. Um, I felt completely safe down there. I, you know, as soon as your mind goes into is it haunted sort of uh, feeling, then you can spook yourself and everything becomes like a ghost. That said, in the parlor room, there's been quite a lot of reports of a boy looking out of the window. Back in 2005, a guide was getting ready to do the tour of the building and the tour group was waiting outside. As he walked through the summer parlour, he noticed the boy dressed in sort of like a sailor's uniform, an old or a very smart uniform, looking out the window. He shouted out to the boy, oh, you're not meant to be in here yet, we've not started. And the boy turned around and he just had a really pale, deathly pale face. That's when the tour guide noticed that he wasn't actually a live person and it was actually a ghost because you could see through him. <laughs> and I, I actually spoke, and I've actually spoken to that to a guide, and he says it's the most scariest thing he's ever seen in his life. So then we come to the southwest chamber of Eastbury Manor. So you had maids at the time were locking up the chamber, and locking all the cabinets up. But what would happen, as soon as they locked them up, they'd leave the room and immediately they could actually hear the locks unlocking themselves. And they'd open up the door, go back in, and every lock in there had been undone. Also, what they do hear in there, and still to this day, is a hissing sound. Now, we didn't hear that while we were there, but we still don't know what is causing that hissing sound in the chamber. Somebody just make a noise then. Like, mm -hmm. uh, no. uh, it, was, it was a verb ball, wasn't it? Sorry. And the loft area of East Roman is quite interesting. There is a rumour, and I've not been able to establish the facts on it. I have looked this up and I can't find any document on it. That a lady was kept there and she met her death there. 
We don't know what, at least I say, there's no record of it. It's a spoken history of East Man instead of a like, documented hi history of it. But the lady was said to have uh, betrayed her husband and instead of like kicking out the house, what you do now or something like that, he locked her in the loft and basically starved her to death. And when staff got there now, they never felt alone. Now on our investigation, we did have something quite interesting to happen to us. So Elaine, who was our spiritual medium that we use, was standing there while I was filming her. And in the video, you can actually see something move around her legs. And I'll put the video in here now, and I'll put the reverse image and the slow down image in it now, so you can see what you think of it. Now later on we went on to do an investigation at Absolute Radio and I sent that video over for them to have a proper analyse of it with their equipment and they come back and they said no we can't work it out but by the measurements that are taken they believe it's about a foot long so wherever it is that's wrapping around the bottom of her legs and flying around the bottom of her legs is about a foot wide now they you know I wouldn't say it couldn't be a bat but we were there with her and we didn't see anything and something that large flying around that area we would have noticed it and again this is the area where people don't feel alone and what we're told is the lady was starved to death in that loft so again it is creepy um it's probably one of those things that it's probably the only time that i've called something on video that i can't say a proper explanation for now it's not an orb it it goes round the legs it goes from one side to the other side it looks a solid object um, yeah, it's, it's a puzzle. I can't make my mind up. So it'd be interesting for you to give me your views on it. What you think it is that goes around the bottom of Elaine's leg. And if that's not enough, the tour guides swear that they hear footsteps in that loft nearly every day when no one else is in the building. So much so that they all got together one day and walked up there and literally they were standing outside and they could hear footsteps walking across the wooden floor and when I opened up the door, it stopped. And again, this is the same place where the lady was meant to met her death. So one of the areas meant to be haunted by the gunpowder plot plotters is by the large fire breast in one of the main rooms. And they've said to have literally seen the figure of Guy Fawkes standing there. Now, Guy Fawkes to me is where he's like got a tall hat and all that, but I can't see how you can work out that it's definitely Guy Fawkes. Um, we can only ever go by paintings and drawings of Guy Fawkes and that sort of clothing was really common back then so all I can say is that people often see a man standing by that fireplace with a tall hat that matches the description of Guy Fawkes um, and he's really angry uh, which I guess would you know, fall into that category of uh, being annoyed that you've just been traded against by one of your friends um, but, you know, it is a common sighting. I haven't actually spoken to anyone, particularly myself, that's seen that. So again, it's second-hand information, but it is one of the most documented ones about it. So again, make up your own mind about it. Eastbury Manor is open for you to go and have tours, or it was before COVID anyway. So yeah, it's one of those places to go and have a look around yourself. Now outside, people can't make up their mind if there's a a grave or just a large concrete slab some people say it's a graveyard or it's a burial um i i or a burial site and to be truthful i forgot i can't remember and i can't find it in my report i'm not i've written in my report if it is i'll write a text down below but i cannot remember what it was <clears throat> all i know is that people would often see a glowing light around the area and they'd often see like a mist coming across from it and that mist would pass through one of the walls and then around about the same time people could hear shuffling down the corridor that backed onto that wall so as if it was someone in an old dress walking down the hall 
So just after World War II, a local family was staying at the manor and they was working in the kitchens. Now I don't know if they were serving like servants there. Uh, after the war, I guess it was being used for something different and it was just rented out by families. What I know is that the mother and the daughter were working in the kitchen cooking food when the lid of the pan flew off and struck the daughter on the back. The mother turned round and what she described was a man standing there in a grey jacket and a grey coat and a long beard and his, as she looked at him he just stared at her and then just completely vanished and literally uh, it scared the life out of them. So spooked by what happened to them the day before, the mother and daughter were in the kitchen and they entered the pantry to get some food out of it and the door slammed behind them. They were trying to get out and they felt as if something was pushing against them. They were trying to push the door open and someone was pushing it back and all of a sudden it let go. They just both flew out of the pantry and there was no one in the kitchen area. And this had gone on, this apparently was repeated time and time again to just the mother and daughter. No other members of the family were affected, but every time they'd been there together, something would generally happen. Interestingly, the daughter states also that she would often wake up at the night time and feel that someone was peering over her while she was sleeping. And you know, often she'd call out for her mum, her mum would go in there and there'd be no one in that room at all. One of the, I guess, more skeptical stories I get, and that's only because when you hear that it's owned by Barking Abbey, and we get locally anything that's got abbots or anything like that in the name, people come up with ghosts of monks. And Eastbury Manor is no different. What we have is a sighting of a group of monks walking around the outside of Eastbury Manor. And now it's got, now it's got some grounds around it where these monks are seen to be walking and entering up to one of the doorways. Now, normally I would sort of poo-poo something like this, but it's in the middle of what you call now like a, a council estate, or definitely sort of like a residential area where people overlook it all the time. When I was getting ready to do an investigation, I went there to do all the background checks. I spoke to a lot of the residents around the area that were happy to tell you they would often see lights come on in the building in the middle of the night or they'd see someone walking around the grounds like when they know there's no one there so for residents to back up this for residents to back up these sort of sightings it's not common they like a bit of history to you know, make their area feel special things aren't always what they seem but this was again and again that residents would tell you that they would see these strange things going on. Even the twisted chimney, that people say they see the chimney stake twisting around in the night time. Even though, you know, it has got a very strange shape to the chimney breast. But residents will tell you that the chimney twists and turns in the night time. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Please have a look at the, the video clips in there and some of the photographs I took or captured from when that image went round your lane. And let me know what your thoughts and feelings are on it, please. Honestly, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. If you like the video, hit like, hit a subscription if you've not subscribed already, and I'll see you in the next one. See you soon. Bye.